Hello YouTube. In this episode, I'd like to share with you some of my portable emergency antenna equipment. Uh, what we're looking at here is the high frequency section with some redundancies. And as we get over here, this is the 2 meter and 70 centimeter portion. So let's have a closer look at what I have and I'll explain what I got and why I think it's valuable and worth being a part of my kit. First off, these are just counterpoise wires in three legs. There's four of them having three legs each and they are 30, uh, 33 feet long for HF counterpoise. Over here is the Wolf Rivers coil system. The benefit about these is they are a low loss system. Uh, you can tune any band. This one is for 40 meters and uh, down to 6 meters. And this one is for up to 80 meters. Now I did purchase these separately but at their price point I couldn't resist but to buy two. Realistically, you only need the 80 meter and you're covered for everything. This is the jaw clamp that I bought to go with it. This will allow me to both run it as a vertical or a near uh, a nevis, um, near vertical incident sky wave. Uh, so that gives me more options with HF. The downside to these is you have to tune them and there's a couple of ways you can go about doing that. One of the ways I normally do it is I connect it to my radio, I get into the operating frequency I want and then I slide the collar up and down until my static level is really loud. That tells me I'm very close the radio I use is a G90, which has a tuner in it, so I can just do a soft tune from there and I'm on the air real quick. These coils need a whip of some kind. They're designed to work with a 102 inch whip, but you can get away with the SS17 17 foot extending whip. Here's my VNA Nano. Uh, this is a virtual network analyzer and I use it for obtaining the SWR when I'm tuning these antennas or if I'm trying to troubleshoot exactly why things are surprising me. I have a coil of extra coax, a secondary coil of coax, and what we're moving into here is the Chameleon m 2.0. Um, this uses, I believe, a 5 to 1 un-un, and uh, it does have losses. You lose about 2S units. For the most part with me, that doesn't matter. It's an acceptable loss. With this one antenna system by itself, I can make multiple antennas from slopers, long wires, dipoles, and fed dipoles, Inverted V, um, Nevis, like it just, the list goes on. This Chameleon m 2.0, the company has recently received the American military contract for supplying this system for their military operations. It comes with a ground spike. It comes with the uh, Chameleon 2.0 mill whip extension and it comes with a mill whip itself. You can run just the whip on the bellin and you'll be fine or you can add the extension and it'll help you get better performance at 80 meters. Next up we have the 2 meter 70 centimeter portion. For this I just use an older handheld. This is the Yesu VX8 I have a modified battery pack to take 18650 uh, cells so that I can charge uh, a pair of cells while I use a pair. It's also outfitted to accept 9 volt and it will charge these uh, cells using the 9 volt. 
Inside the battery pack is a BMS that I installed or a battery management system and I've had excellent luck with this. Uh, this radio is submersible uh, down to I believe three feet for three minutes so it's good to operate if you're in the rain. It does have GPS, it has APRS in it, but it is an older model, so it doesn't have any of the latest bells and whistles. However, it does cover the 2 meter, the 70 centimeter band. It'll receive air band, it receives all the commercial uh, frequencies for land, mobile, as well as marine. Uh, it'll receive AM and FM broadcast signals and with the right antenna it'll also receive the entire HF spectrum just as a receiver and it has the capacity to transmit on six meters so a very valuable part of my kit after that I have a frequency counter uh, in case you're doing emergencies and you're working with somebody else who has another radio but they don't know its frequency or how it's programmed uh, this will answer a lot of questions. It's a, a good piece of kit. This here is a folding high gain gooseneck antenna. It's far too heavy to just put on the radio. It outweighs the radio by about three times. So what I did was get this aluminium uh, flat strap, uh, bend a 45 in it and cut it at a proper length to tune the antenna to it. And then I just put this lead as a breakout to take all the weight and stress off of the radio as well as increase its uh, potential of performance um, and it is a, a reasonably significant increase. In addition to that, these are two 440 ohm ladder line antennas. The, uh, it's a, a, a J-pole configuration. Um, kind of a homemade antenna I was playing with for a while. Uh, those will work good on uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. I have two of them because uh, two is one, one is none. This is my split shaft Yagi Udia Aero 2 antenna with uh, a built in 2 meter 70 centimeter diplexer as well as the radials for it and this is good for satellite operations or directed communications when you need to aim your signal directly at an antenna and try and get uh, all the performance you can get out of it although I will say I've had a better signal report using this antenna off the radio than I've gotten using that Yagi Udia on an 18 foot mast aimed at the receiving antenna. This is just a look at some of the various antenna equipment I have tucked away in one little bag and it literally takes care of all of my radio needs in the field. It's quite rugged, very little to go wrong. With everything else there's always a compromise this antenna you can put it up in the worst of weather so fast you don't get wet or cold but you accept a 2s unit loss this antenna is going to give you a slightly better transmit and receive performance but you're going to shiver quite a bit to get it uh, properly tuned into the frequency although it will tune um, the entire hf spectrum all of this equipment here, uh, including my big bag of parts here, <laughs> where I've got some extra coaxes and leads and jumpers and just a few things to, uh, to help out when things aren't going exactly well. All of this equipment here tucks away really nice and neat into this bag. And although it is heavy, this deployment system is not meant for soda. You're not going to put it on your back and carry it to the top of the summit. Uh, maybe poda, but really it's for camping or emergency disaster relief from a communication perspective and standpoint. 
uh, meant to be operated in a static area for a prolonged period of time. That's pretty much all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.